Yes. So very good afternoon to everyone. Our so has, topic of uh, yes sir. How how the how you guys are scheduled? You will be Harsh will be presenting first. I will be then, presenting first, followed by Rishikesh and uh, last speaker Sunny will present. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So sir, our topic of presentation is flow room. and uh, these are the whole table of contents i will be covering the initial four that includes uh, introduction assumption in flow theory consistency equation and flow rule we have my sixth equation and prescas uh, flow rule will be covered by rishikesh and vijay sani will cover one my sixth flow rule and an example hmm. so sir let's start with a bit of revision we know that uh, in the elastic region stress and strain stress and strain are proportional to each other so at any point if i want to calculate the strain i can do that by knowing the independent material constant and value of stress at that point but in the plastic region or the region after the yielding stress and strain are not direct uh, not proportional to each other the relation becomes non linear and that depends upon material property and loading history Now, what do we mean by loading history? Let's look at uh, from this graph. Now, if we were to load a material up to point A and then release the loading, it will follow the path A, B, and C. Now, at point A, B, C, we can see all the point will have the same value of plastic uh, strain, which is indicated at the bottom of figure. I hope you all can see. epsilon p now sir at point a we will have elastic strain as indicated as i'm drawing in the figure this will the value of elastic strain at point a and at point b this will be the value of elastic strain and at point c we will have zero elastic strain so what we can see from the figure that even though all the points have same plastic strain but all point have will have different uh, elastic strain and the value of stress is at those points is also different so we what we can say that the stress is in the elastic or re plastic region or the region after yielding can't be directly associated with the plastic strain so what is basically a flow rule now sir in fluid mechanics we have studied that if a fluid is subjected to slightest of shear force it will continuously deform or it will start flowing now that re relation of that uh, continuous deformation with the applied stress is given by newton's law of viscosity where the shear stress is equal to mu times dv by so sir here dv rep represent the continuous deformation and tau s is representing the stress so similarly in the solid mechanics the the relation which describes uh, the law which describes the relation between the deformation and the plastic or plastic strain and the stress is known as the flow rule it's basically a mathematical description of how a material flows beyond the initial yield value now this equation uh, basically is a connection between the increment of stress stresses and certain parameter of plastic stress now sir unlike the hooke's law or unlike uh, the elastic uh, stress and relationship where we have stress uh, sigma is equal to e times epsilon which is where epsilon and uh, strain are in absolute form unlike that in plastic region we can't define uh, it in finite form so we must use the differential relation so flow rule are given in two forms first one is incremental form and the in second one is it uh, 
rate form. Now, sir, before we look at the flow rule, we must uh, look at some uh, look at some assumption. Now, first one is what is isotropic. Now, if we take this assumption, it simplifies our calculation because we don't need to take a different uh, material constant for different direction. And also, this makes sure that the principal axis of plastic strain increment coincides with the principal uh, axis of stress. Now, the second assumption is, sir, we are assuming that uh, as we are assuming small strain theory. So basically, the volumetric change or the deformation, volumetric change is very sm small, so deformation will be of isochoric type. So basically, we can say. epsilon epsilon v is equal to epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 now since all process is isochoric it will be equal to 0 and in chain in the increment form we can write it as del epsilon d epsilon p 1 plus del epsilon p2 plus del epsilon p3 p3 is equal to now so another, yes sir so basically here you are talking about the volumetric change due to plastic deformation right yes sir yes sir fine yes sir and uh, in assumption number three we are assuming that the total increment in strain component, which is shown by the epsilon ij in initial notation, is equal to change in elastic strain plus change in plastic strain. Now, this change in elastic strain can be calculated from Hooke's law. And in assumption number four, we are assuming that the increment in plastic strain is proportional to the deviatrix strain. We all have studied deviatrix stress, uh, deviatrix stress before, which is responsible for the deformation. Now, in the last assumption, we are assuming that the stress state remains on the yield surface. Now, yield function. F has two variables, sigma and k. Now, if we change it by small amount f can be written as d change in oh, sorry, just give us a the so change in infinite decimal change in f will be equal to change in its variable sigma plus d sigma plus a plus d. Now, we want the, even after the change, we want the function to re, still remain on the yield surface and on, and on the yield surface, this value should be equal to 0. So, in differential form, we can write the same as del f by del sigma into d sigma plus del f by del k into d k is equal to 0 which represents del f. Now, this condition, this consistency, this is also known as consistency equation condition which will help us in the Lagrange multiplier. Now, sir, coming, coming to flow rule. Now, the general form of flow rule is d epsilon p is equal to d lambda into dg del g by del sigma where del is the lagrange multiplier lagrange multiplier or also known as plastic multiplier now this multiplier can be determined from the consistency equation which we just saw now here dk can be replaced by h into d lambda where h is equal to for work hardening uh, in case of work hardening h is equal to sigma into df into del f into del sigma. Now, we can substitute the value of h into this equation and then we can write uh, this equation in form of del lambda is equal to 
we can substitute the value of uh, dk dk we can substitute this value of dk in this equation consistency equation and get the value of uh, lambda the value of plastic multiplier or lagrange multiplier now here sir g is a scalar function it is also called as uh, the plastic potential now this equation equation d is is called a non associative flow rule which is basically a general case now in case of uh, of sub class of materials whose plastic potential is yield function that is g is equal to f that g is equal to f. now sir in case of uh, this material where plastic potential and function are same the flow rule becomes associated flow rule because the g the plastic portion potential is associated with a particular yield criteria now further will be explained by rishi case yes okay harsh so let's go back a bit yes sir <coughs> So oh, fine. Oh, let's let's move ahead. Okay. This is also okay. This slide is this slide is pretty clear. Yeah. Here you are basically uh, go to slide number five. Yes, sir. Here when you have written the tau s equal to mu dv by d y y. I mean, what you are trying to say here? You are basically. No, sir. The name is yes, sir. Name is equal. Uh, its name is flow rule. So I have tried try to connect with the flow of fluids. Okay. So basically, you are telling that the <coughs> it is kind of a similar phenomena as we have observed the case of shear stress. Yes. Sir. So basically, yes, continuous deformation. Uh, yes, sir. Analogous okay. to the deformation in fluids. Sir. Okay. And this tau s. You are comparing with the DEP. That means incremental strain. And you yes, are ta ta tau s. We are comparing with the stresses that are causing the plastic strain. Basically, sigma sir. And okay. uh, v sir, v is representing the continuous deformation. Continuous deformation in the sense is it the deformation of fluid sir, and that we are relating with the increment. Or we can also use the rate form, but. Uh, we have discussed in terms of just the increment okay go ahead let me see it in the next slide find the isotropic assumptions and chalo aage badho so when we are saying that incremental form the yes. means we are considering still the uh, still the material is on the yield surface or yes, yield sir, we are, yes. yes sir we are assuming that the the stress state will always remain on the yield surface hmm. then only your f would be zero right yes so in this that basically we are assuming that even if there is a change in f so okay. that we are finding df even if the change is we still <coughs> want to make sure the uh, f still yes. remains on the yield surface yeah basically you are making df as zero so it would have been better if iska graphical representation aap bata pate okay sir i will, okay. i will, i will try to add it in this slide sir before uh, go okay go move move to the next slide yes. now here when you are saying that pehle to ye equation ko na aapko ye yahan pe apne del ko wo ek alag hi symbol type se le liya del g aur del sigma jo hai wo symbol kuch You haven't write it in the form of equation. Yes, sir. D lambda likha. उसके बाद ये del की जगह कुछ और ही symbol आ रहा है. ये symbol को सुधार लीजिएगा. ठीक है? Okay, okay, sir. मैं कितना? Okay, so plastic your Lagrange multiplier. कंसिस्टेंसी क्वेश्चन से आप निकालने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं व्हाट यू आर सेइंग एच इज हियर एच इज योर वर्क हार्डनिंग नहीं सर एच फॉर दिस एच 
वैल्यू कैन बी फाइंड आउट फ्रॉम हवर खाडनी हां तो ओवर खाड चेंज इन के इज रिलेटेड टू एच वी आर कांस्टेंट एच इन चेंज इन के इज रिलेटेड टू चेंज इन मल्टीप्लायर लैग्रेंज मल्टीप्लायर ये रिलेशन कहां से आया सर डेरिवेशन सर एक्चुअल में वी डोंट नो द डेरिवेशन बट वी सॉ द वैल्यू दिस वैल्यू फ्रॉम अस इन अ पर्टिकुलर पीडीएफ सर ओके सो उस पे थोड़ा लाइट थोड़ा थ्रो करना था दैट हाउ दिस इज रिलेटेड ये जीज इट इज कॉल्ड फाइन चलो आगे बढ़ो लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड the last statement what you want to convey what you want to convey ha uh, means wo kya bol raha hai yes sir sir the, in this equation equation d this is for general form hmm. now right if the plastic potential surface coincides with the yield surface hmm. then we can replace the g with f fine that is fine last statement last line yes sir yes sir then this since the g is related with the associated with the yield criteria particular flow rule then this special category of flow, flow rule are known as the associated flow rule sir where g is associated with particular uh, yield criteria so this like if it gets associated to tresca so we yes sir it, it, it will become the tresca as uh, flow rule as tresca flow rule and if yes, it is associated to von mises you will call it as von mises flow rule von mises flow rule fine okay then uh, any question from anybody ye koi nahi puchega mujhe malum hai chalo move to the next slide um next person who is now rishikesh rishikesh will ask okay yes please go ahead yes i cannot hear anything ha uh, yes sir yeah. as uh, discussed that uh, to to analyze the stress strain relation in plastic deformation uh, levi mises equation is used which is applicable only for ideal plastic solid so to study the flow rule we have to uh, we have to first understand the levi mises equation which define the uh, plastic uh, plastic stress strain relation so uh, we have uh, by considering uh, uniaxial by considering a specimen which is subjected to uniaxial tension sigma 1 we know that the state of stress contains the hydrostatic stress plus adiabatic stress but we know that uh, we know that the hydrostatic stress uh, the change in volume is equal to zero we have assumed that the change in volume is negligible in case of hydrostatic stress so we have to neglect it hence by considering the the vectric stress uh, which will be contribute to yielding we considered uh, that the the vectric stress which defines a uh, sigma moment yes uh, then sigma 1 prime is equals to uh, sigma 1 minus sigma m sigma m denotes the hydrostatic stress which is defined as sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 divided by 3 which is the average then uh, as we get uh, sigma 1 prime is equals to 2 sigma 1 by 3 and like this uh, sigma 2 prime that which is the component of the deviatric stress which we, we have gotten that minus sigma 1 by 3 and like this sigma 3 prime then uh, arranging this uh, uh, three equations uh, we can form a relation sigma 1 prime is equals to minus 2 sigma 2 prime is equals to minus 2 sigma 3 prime then 
further huh. in uh, as it is the as in the case of plastic deformation the change in volume is zero then uh, uh, the change in volume is zero so we considered the uh, uh, epsilon v that is the uh, volumetric strain is considered as a zero therefore as there is intensity stress in only one direction the deformation in both remaining direction will be same because of uh, assumption that isotropy of material hence eta to uh, epsilon 2 is equals to epsilon 3 by this condition we get that epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon uh, 2 is uh, written uh, epsilon 3 will be written as epsilon 2 is equals to 0 and we get uh, epsilon 1 is equals to minus 2 epsilon 2 epsilon 3 then writing this relation we get the relation of epsilon 1 is equals to minus epsilon 2 is equals to minus 2 epsilon uh, 3 but the flow rule is going to relate the state of stress to corresponding increment in plastic strain so so we have to write rewrite this relation in the increment order which is given in equa equation number uh, 2 then by comparing equation 1 of the dividend yeah. stress one and minute. one minute one minute yes sir yeah just i have one question that yes, sir. one what you have shown as epsilon one epsilon two and epsilon three are the only plastic strain or it's a total strain Hello. yeah can you yes sir you plastic strain plastic strain these are only the plastic strain epsilon one yes epsilon sir two. yes sir we are in levy mice's equation is only uh, yeah. for plastic fine. region fine fine okay go oh, well. Yes, hey, one minute. Huh. Then, by comparing this, uh, we get by comparing the equation one and two. Uh, sigma. Yes, huh. for uh, sigma one prime is equals to minus two sigma two prime, and uh, d epsilon one is equals to minus two d epsilon two for plus t by rewriting this equation we get uh, d epsilon 1 by d epsilon 2 is equals to sigma 1 prime by sigma 2 prime is equals to minus 2 by rearranging the equation we get the relation of uh, d epsilon upon uh, d epsilon 1 upon sigma 1 prime is equals to d epsilon 2 upon sigma 2 prime is equals to d epsilon 3 upon sigma 3 prime and which is uh, denoted by some constant d lambda that is a plastic multiplier plastic multiplier which is determining by in ensuring the stress state lies on ill surface during plastic flow uh, plastic multipliers is also again determined by using the hardening rule so this equation, this relation shows that at any instant of, of deformation, the ratio of plastic strain increment to deviatric stress component that remains constant. So then uh, the, this defined as the increment of this equation by rewriting the equation of uh, d epsilon 1 sigma 1 prime, we can rewrite this equation in this form. This defined as the increment in plastic strain in terms of deviatric and plastic multiplier the when we considered the three stresses sigma xx sigma yy and sigma zz then the this equation can be rewrite in the form of this d epsilon xx is equal to d lambda 2 by 3 uh, sigma xx minus sigma yy minus 2 sigma zz by 2 yeah. this equation then defines the increment in plastic strain is equals to uh, d lambda into sigma ij prime this uh, this is this is known as levy mises which denotes the flow rule uh, the general form can be written as as discussed by uh, this discussed earlier d epsilon p ij is equals to d lambda d lambda uh, S uh, sorry sigma ij prime so uh, 
uh, then the the more general form of this equation can be written as d epsilon i j p is equals to d lambda upon g i j that g i j is a sum function of stress and other quantities such, such like the hardening parameter then the general model equation of this equation uh, can be written as d epsilon i j raised to p is equals to d lambda partial derivative of g with respect to partial derivative of sigma i j which is stress then uh, where g is a scalar function which when differentiate with with respect to stresses gives plastic strain that denotes the plastic potential then uh, for uh, when we consider uh, when we, when we consider in function as a plastic potential then the, this equation we get this equation which uh, denotes the associated flow rule that uh, then what is the normality rule it is defined as the plastic strain increment vector is normal to as depends on the gradient of the ill function with respect to shear stress and the direction of this differentiation is not yeah, to the minute. surface as we know uh, no yes sir yeah, can you uh, we just lost you actually in somewhere there was a disturbance in the network so just repeat this slide from the start this slide normality rule sir yes sir huh. uh, yes then and then uh, this normality rule is associated with the associated flow loop which define that the plastic strain increment vector is normal to the ill surface x is defined as the gradient of ill function uh, ill function f with respect to stress sigma ij and direction of this differentiation is normal to the ill surface as we know that the gradient of function on surface is always normal to the surface so this normality rule defines as the plastic strain increment vector is normal to the ill surface uh, then the flow rule associated with the tresca criteria uh, as uh, we know that the tresca criteria uh, <laughs> as we know that tresca ill criteria is based on a maximum shear stress theory so uh, if we have given the stress sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 and is greater than sigma 3 the tresca's ill criteria is given as uh, ill function f is equals to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by uh, sigma 3 by 2 which denotes the maximum shear stress minus k it, that is some parameter then by differentiate partial differentiating with respect to stress we get the uh, partial differentiation of function f with respect to sigma 1 we get this value half with respect to uh, uh, stress 2 we get 0 with respect to stress 3 we get minus 1 by 2 uh, this defines this defines when we substitute this value in the equation uh, d sigma i j h to p d lambda i j we get the relation of the uh, stress increment uh, plastic stress increment is equals to d lambda 1 by 2 Zero minus one by two. Then, uh, as from this, we we uh, observe that all the plastic deformation occurs in the one three plane. Yes, sir. that's all. Uh, further slide will be explained by P J. Yeah. Any question from anyone? Yes. Go back a bit. See, uh, yeah, but, um, further, yes, move back. Yeah, the, in this slide, whenever, yes, in this slide, see, when you are talking that it is only plastic strain, it should be very clear because otherwise, what is happening, yes, uh, it, it's creating a little bit of confusion that uh, what is uh, epsilon one, epsilon two, and epsilon three. Right. Yes, sorry, for it. Uh, when you will be uploading the slides, just ensure yes, that. Sir. What you are talking about, है ना? Yes sir. ठीक है. अब यहाँ पे मेरा एक क्वेश्चन है. Before, see when you say plastic multiplier, so what I see that the what you have written on the right side, the plastic multiplier की value यहाँ पे minus two आ रही है. 
अरे yes, sir. So, is it, अब यहाँ पे आपकी तो वैल्यू आई नहीं है इसमें तो डील एमडा भी आपने निकाला नहीं है निकाला है क्या इसमें नहीं निकाला नहीं सर इसमें नहीं निकाला sir, लेकिन पिछली वाले हाँ बोलो यस सर डील एमडा एक हार्डनिंग रूल से आता है सर वो एक्चुअली जो वैल्यू है सर कॉन्स्टेंट हाँ कॉन्स्टेंट लेकिन पिछले वाले में वो आपका देखने से लग रहा है इन दिस या इट लुक लाइक द डील एमडा इज माइनस टू इन दिस केस इज इट Yes, sir. No, no, sir. अब यहाँ पे डी एप्सलॉन वन बाय सिग्मा वन डैश कितना होगा आपका जो राइट साइड में राइट राइट साइड में डी एप्सलॉन वन बाय सिग्मा वन डैश इज इक्वल टू डू डी एप्सलॉन टू बाय सिग्मा टू डैश होगा यस सर यस सर एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू माइनस टू यस सर यस सर हाँ गॉट इट तो ये माइनस टू आता हुआ दिख रहा है मुझे इस केस में So, ये प्रॉब्लम स्पेसिफिक आया है कि ये कैसा है मतलब वो मेरा एक क्वेश्चन है आर यू गेटिंग माय पॉइंट व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से जो रिलेशन आपने लिखा है उससे मेरे को डी लेमडा की वैल्यू प्लास्टिक मल्टीप्लायर की वैल्यू माइनस टू दिख रही है यस yes, सर यहाँ पे तो वैल्यू ये तो खैर आप बोल रहे हो कि वहां से आएगा तो वहां पे yes, ऐसे sir. कैसे आ उस केस में ऐसे कैसे आ गया डी लेमडा की वैल्यू कैसे आ गई माइनस टू सर अगर सिग्मा प्राइम हाँ अच्छा तो आई विल ये तो ठीक है ये रिलेशन तो आपका ठीक है दैट इज नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम ये तो आपका हाइड्रोस्टैटिक सिग्मा वन बाय थ्री आ रहा है और फिर आपने उससे निकाला है Yes sir. Sir, to relate this, I have considered this. या फिर आप इसको माइनस टू नहीं मतलब यस सर शायद नहीं लिखते तो भी चलता नहीं ये आपको माइनस टू नहीं है आपको ये लिखना था कि भाई ये सीधा डी एफ स्लॉन वन बाय डी एफ स्लॉन टू इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा वन डैश बाय सिग्मा रेशियो इससे यस सर यस सर ठीक है ये माइनस करने के लिए लिखा था हाँ तो नहीं वो लेकिन वो माइनस टू हो जाता है तो फिर वो आप इस हिसाब से तो हम कह रहे हैं कि डी लेफ्ट डाइस माइनस टू राइट नो सर सॉरी यस सर डी रेशियो इस सेम यस बट वो रेशियो की वैल्यू रेशियो की वैल्यू जो है वो प्लास्टिक मल्टीप्लायर है यस सर ठीक है सो फाइन और पी Otherwise just uh, and one more ma ma request is there की आप पूरे ग्रुप का प्रेजेंटेशन क्लब कर लीजिए एक साथ मिला लीजिए इंडिविजुअल इंडिविजुअल अपलोड मत लीजिए पूरा ग्रुप मतलब ग्रुप नंबर सिक्स के तीनों लोगों का एक ही पीपीटी अपलोड होगा यस सर हमने एक ही पीपीटी में सब स्लाइड डाली हाँ ठीक है क्योंकि देट वुड बी बेटर हेलो यस गुड इवनिंग सर एंड एवरी वन एज हर्ष एंड ऋषिकेश टोल्ड अबाउट द फ्लो रूल एसोसिएटेड फ्लो रूल एंड द डिफरेंट क्राइटेरियाज वन मिनट सर ओके सो आई आई एम हेयर 
right now to speak about the bone bone mycelial criteria as uh, harsh and uh, rishikesh told about the associated flow rule flow rule and the different criteria very well uh, so in bone mycelial criteria as we know as uh, the other group members discussed uh, before that the bone mycelial criteria is basically related to the maximum distortion energy theory and uh, the distortion theory as we know the distortion energy is the strain energy which is due to the change in the shape of the material so here under the bone mycelial criteria the shear stress shear stress stresses take place so here we can see in the figure the there is the yield surface and beyond this yield surface if there is a point if uh, there is a stresses then the material will go after the yielding um in other world in other words we can say if the stress state at any point in on the cylinder cylinder which is the yield surface due to the the bone mycelial criteria then the material has started to yield at this point in the structure similarly the tresca yield criteria and the bone mycelium both are based on the maximum possible normal and shear stresses that the material can withstand so inside the yield surface the material is safe due to the yielding that is what all discussed before very well so now we have the flow rule associated with the bone mycelium yield criteria but we can see here the bone mycelium yield criteria is written in the function the yield function is written for the this yield criteria is j2 minus k square is equals to 0 here the j2 is what J2 is showing the relation in the principal stresses. This is uh, basically the debiotic stresses invariant, and when this J2 reaches up to a critical value k, then this function it comes yeah, under. Yeah, your voice is breaking in between, Vijay. Voice breaking, sir. Network uh, issue. Is it clear now? Is it uh, audible? Hello. hello hello uh, it, yeah in between it voice. is just so yeah, i was making it slowly i, I hope think. yeah go ahead in a slow fashion okay sir so here we can see in the bone mycelium yield criteria there is a yield function that is j2 minus k square is equals to 0 j2 is showing the stress invariant the debiotic stress invariant when it reaches to a critical value k then the yield occurs yielding occurs in this criteria this criteria shows that function okay now we have to use this criteria in the flow rule flow rule as we can see in the last of this slide that d epsilon p is equals to d lambda del f upon del sigma i so when we can when we see that flow rule then we have to replace replace in the sense that function f we have to differentiate this function with respect to principal stresses and then i have to put in that flow rule so as we can see in the second second line j2 is equals to this for the von mises yield criteria and now we have to differentiate sorry now we are here differentiating with a principal stress sigma 1 then we get this result 2 by 3 of sigma 1 minus half of sigma 2 plus sigma 3 then the next slide we are differentiating it with further principal stresses that is sigma 2 with sigma 2 and then with sigma 3 so we get the basic the differentiation of this yield function with different principal stresses then we get finally the this thing that is the rate of change of the plastic strain and that we got for the von mises flow rule all all of this okay so in this the hardening parameter is d lambda and the other one is the relationship between the principal stresses so this is basically the von mises flow rule okay so in the next slide we can see the flow rule what 
there are many attempts have been made over the years to justify this flow rule both mathematically and physically however it should be noted that the associative the associative flow rule is not a law of nature by any means it is simply very very convenient and in the other manners it does agree with the experimental observations of many plastically deforming materials particularly metals so basically we we have lot of experiments for this flow rule to get this flow rule we don't have any perfect kind of uh, it is not a natural uh, law of nature so we have performed very experiment in the different materials to get this and uh, we have a problem uh, also to flow to associate to derive the flow rule associated with the more coulomb yield criteria which will i show on my paper just a second can you see my slide my yes yes your notebook is visible yes okay so in the question we have there is a function uh, associated with the more one second more coulomb yield criteria um function is given as alpha sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 is equals to k okay so we can write it as a function alpha sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 minus k that is the yield function for mohr coulomb yield criteria okay and here alpha is 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi and we know the flow rule is that is dsln p now we are differentiating differentiating with respect to sigma 1 that will conclude 1 by 2 of alpha uh, okay 1 by 2 1 plus sin phi we took the relation from there and similarly with respect to sigma 2 there is nothing so zero and with respect to sigma 3 that will be 1 by 2 of minus 1 that equals to minus 1 by 2 so we can write Uh, in form of equation a that is d epsilon sigma 1 is co number 1 put kar do then d sigma d lambda sorry multiply by 1 by 2 1 plus sin phi that is equation 1 So from these three equations, a 
can write it in matrix form also. So that relation will final comes out for the mall colon yield criteria. And one more thing is also asked in this that is show relation for del VP upon del V. That is the DFLN 1P, DFLN 2P plus DFLN 3P. And from one, two, three equation, we can add both price of them. So we get this, that will be equals to the lambda out of this. After solving things, we get this relation. So this is all the problem is about, as you can see all the Okay, uh, Vijay, here, yes. uh, like, there was one assumption during the plastic deformation as uh, Rishikesh was presenting or something, like the change in volume is zero. Yes, right? sir. But in your case, you are finding some change in volume. Could you explain that? Mm, one minute, sir. Um, The total change in volume in the plastic strain is zero. Yes, plastic. So due to plastic, due to plastic strain, and this is plastic strain in plastic strain only. What you have found, right? Change in volume due to. Mm, yes, sir. Or Rishikesh can uh, right? It was Rishikesh only. It was Rishikesh only who just presented before you. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. could you explain a bit? You uh, slide that you showed that sum of plastic strain would be zero, change in plastic strain would be zero, but we have volume change in plastic strain. Ki I think that was the assumption and that is inside the more column yield criteria. I think the assumption, I'm not getting it. Sir, I think that was in on more column yield criteria. Uh, there is a change in more column yield criteria. We can see the assumption. There was no criteria used as of uh, what he presented. Criteria to baad mein laga hoga na. Pehle to apne sirf ek normal relation se bataya tha ki bhai d epsilon is your lambda times. What is that? Or uh, d epsilon by sigma prime was equal to d lambda constant with one ratio board recipes. Mm, 
just think over it just think over it yes, or try and find your explanation but yes take okay. yes sir okay any any other question anybody has no sir fine then we will stop today and kal kar den ka shake to kal i hope aap hi log ne kaha tha my morning mein rahega so we'll have it in the morning 10 o'clock yes sir yes sir okay sir okay fine yeah. we'll have it in the morning okay sir okay okay then thank you all